and so we have these lies to make it work the problem is those lies that seem to make it work will only take you so far we can't go where we're going The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today. And you walk with him by saying words. My name is Andrew Hemstraut. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. If this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you, then consider becoming a partner with us. Joseph Schumpter an Austrian economist in the 1900s, early 1900s. He said that a real entrepreneur is one who engages in creative destruction because the entrepreneur is creating a new product or a new service and that new product and new service makes the old obsolete or destroys the old. Well, introduction of the new Holy Ghost worship destroys the old. It makes the old look stupid, ill-informed, and even fake. There is a new manifestation of the Spirit coming. The roots of which are in Holy Ghost worship actually this is a continuation but I'm beginning to speak more and more on the new manifestation of the Spirit the beginning of the last days was the day of Pentecost mm -hmm. that was the beginning of the Holy Ghost dispensation well we're now at the end of it Acts chapter 2 verse 15 for these are not drunken as you suppose seeing it is but the third hour of the day and we know what was going on there the anointing had come upon them and the, it made them seem like they were drunk people are you here yeah. have you seen this have you experienced it I have verse 16 but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel so this outpouring of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost which happened in verse 1 through 4 was that which was spoken by the prophet Joel at the very beginning say the very beginning, the very beginning of the Holy Ghost dispensation people being filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues and seeming like they're drunken which meant they probably laughed and they fell down have you ever seen a drunk person do you think these people in Galilee do you think they didn't know what a drunk person looked like and they're like oh I've never seen a drunk person before no so they're they're accusing these people of being drunk mm -hmm. Peter said these are not drunk as you suppose mm -hmm. right so they were being affected by this outpouring of the Spirit where they were acting drunk and they were speaking in other tongues and they were laughing and they were falling down mm -hmm. are you here yeah. mm -hmm. at the beginning of this dispensation Peter said this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel this new manifestation listen that I'm talking about is not that this is not that this is that which was at the beginning of this dispensation this new manifestation of the Spirit is not that we have preachers continuing to pursue the fullness of that they're constantly trying to get back to that and if they have that manifestation in their meetings or in their services or in their churches they will proclaim we've got there we finally got back to where we began I've heard him say finally we've made it back to the fullness of what it was at the beginning and most people most people in most churches be like yes that's what we're trying to be like is as the church was at the very beginning are you seeing this yeah. that's as far as they can go is the beginning not the end we're not at the beginning now 
we're at the end they're literally trying to go back and like I said I know it makes some of you mad but it's these lies that are holding you back say the first of which, the first of which. is you already have the Holy Spirit when you get born again you just need to release him release the gift you already have him release the gift which to me is is borders on ridiculous because why would you then receive him if you already have him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you wouldn't pursue him and receive him mm -hmm. now Jesus said you must be born again do you remember this mm -hmm. John chapter 3 verse 3 and Jesus answered and said unto him verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again see I'm not making up words it's actually in your Bible born again he cannot see the kingdom of God verse 4 Nicodemus saith unto Jesus how can a man be born when he is old can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born and Jesus answered verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the Spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God verse 6 that which is born of the flesh is flesh that which is born of the spirit is spirit verse 7 marvel not that I said unto thee you must be born again so we can see here Jesus has said it at least twice you must be born again say I must, I must be, born again. be born again did he say that's a good suggestion no he said you must if you're gonna see the kingdom of God verse 8 the wind blows where it listeth and thou hearest the sound thereof but cannot tell whence it comes and whither it goes so is everyone that is born of the Spirit and so now you have people taking this verse this last part of this verse they would say that when you're born again you have the Spirit when you got born in the natural can you understand this your mother gave birth to you and then once once you were there then you could walk around and say that I have my mother in me is that how that worked no, no who would say that that's wacky uh -huh. well just like in the natural just because the Holy Ghost did an operation and by, because you believed on Jesus you were born again does not mean you have the Holy Ghost it just means you are now a new born spirit baby yeah. say spirit baby. spirit baby that's just fun to say your spirit was reborn brand new your mind wasn't reborn still had the same old mind right we have to renew it your body wasn't reborn same body but your spirit man was reborn by an operation of the Holy Ghost not that you have the Holy Ghost you're born of a woman have you heard this the Bible talks about being born of a woman Jesus said no you've never heard of this Jesus said that of all the men born of a woman John the Baptist was the greatest of those who were born of a woman well John the Baptist didn't go around and say that he had his mother in him no. when he was born of a woman are you here mm -hmm. so this is biblical language Jesus on when he was speaking this way thought that the people he was talking to would understand what he was saying they didn't have the Holy Ghost but they were born again by an operation of the Spirit does this make sense yeah. the Latin words that we get out of that Latin words tabla rasa which means a clean slate your slate has been cleaned nothing there anymore nothing written on it nothing there and you became at that moment a child of God operation of the Spirit born again tabla rasa clean slate child of God fresh beginning but none of that was that you have the Holy Ghost you were a newborn spirit not yet filled with the Holy Ghost and I shall now prove it even more is that okay yes. 
Acts chapter 16 verse 30 he brought them out and said sirs what must I do to be saved good question right hey Paul you think Paul knew you think Silas knew what must I do to be saved and they said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house verse 32 and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house verse 33 and he took them that same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized he and all his straight away mm -hmm. pretty good right mm -hmm. so what did he have to do to be saved Paul and Silas told him you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved mm -hmm. right and then he went on and got baptized even mm -hmm. and baptism we know is an outward confession of your faith mm -hmm. were they saved mm -hmm. they got saved right here right? right no one would argue that they weren't saved now Romans 10 just read this real quick and verse 9 if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved so again what do we have to do we have to believe on Jesus and here it adds a little more you have to believe that God say God God, God raised Jesus from the dead and if you believe that you will be saved mm -hmm. you confess with your mouth and you believe that and you are saved so if I do that I'm just trying to establish something if I do that can I claim that I am saved according to the scriptures yeah. Yeah. that's the way it's written and if you do that that's what you get you get saved you get as Jesus said born again brand new baby spirit baby spirit brand new that's what born again it nobody comes out a full-grown human and that little baby you can feed them and teach them and train them up into whatever they will become right mm -hmm. so that's how you get saved are we here mm -hmm. Acts chapter 1 verse 9 and when he Jesus had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight right so Jesus was standing there talking to them and then he went up in a cloud and the cloud received him Jesus out of their sight but he was standing there talking to him so did these people according to the scriptures we just read did they believe that God raised Jesus from the dead yes. yes so we have people here his disciples and it was more than 120 by the way it's so another verse of scripture it says above 500 all saw him he talked to all of them and they all believed on him and they saw him go up in the cloud were these people according to the verses that we just read were these people saved mm -hmm. they believed on him yep. and they believed that God raised him from the dead mm -hmm. saved so we have all these saved people here Acts chapter 2 verse 1 and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they these people who had already believed and they were already obeying Jesus right verse 4 and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost were they all filled with the Holy Ghost before verse 4 no. so what you're saying is that they were not filled with the Holy Ghost yeah. Yeah. before verse 4 mm -hmm. how could they be right. he hadn't even come yet right. but we've already proven that these people were already saved yeah. they were already born again mm -hmm. let's look at another example Is this okay yeah. can I can I do this so they those people were born again and they received the Holy Ghost meaning they did not already have the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost didn't show up on the day of Pentecost and say now release me release the gift because I'm already in there and mind you almost three-fourths of the disciples that believed that Jesus was raised from the dead and were born again didn't wait around for the Holy Ghost and went off and preached the gospel sans Holy Ghost without the Holy Ghost 
does that happen today yeah. and so let's add and so we have these lies to make it work the problem is those lies that seem to make it work will only take you so far you can't go where we're going Acts chapter 8 and verse 5 then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them mm -hmm. and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake hearing and seeing the miracles which he did verse 7 for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed and there was great joy in that city verse 12 but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God say they believed they believed, they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ so they believed on the name of Jesus Christ they were baptized both men and women so here we have people hearing the gospel mm -hmm. about the Lord Jesus right says they believed believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and then it says they were baptized would anyone deny that they were saved that they were born again no one would deny that they were obviously saved and born again according to other verses of scriptures our definition of what being saved is and the new birth so they were born again are you here yes. get it straight so we have people that are born again is this too difficult mm -hmm. say these people, these people were, born again. were born again verse 14 now when the Apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the Word of God they sent unto them Peter and John verse 15 who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost where these people are already saved yes. Yes. saved baptized born again little baby spirits then the Apostles when they'd heard that these people had received and were born again and were baptized mm -hmm. they came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost why would they do that if they knew being Apostles that someone once they're born again has the Holy Ghost they wouldn't do that and they didn't pray that they might release the gift that's already in them being born again verse 16 for as he had yet fallen upon none of them only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus verse 17 then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost they received the Holy Ghost they who they people who were believers in Jesus born again baptized received the Holy Ghost according to our biblical definition they were already saved and yet had not received the Holy Ghost so it makes no sense when people say that when you're born again you have the Holy Ghost it's unscriptural and people would say yeah what about this verse in Galatians what about that verse in Corinthians all of those people had already received the Holy Ghost do so you read you're taking it out of context saying that these people I found some saved people and it says they have the Holy Ghost yeah they have the Holy Ghost because they received the Holy Ghost they received the Holy Ghost which meant they didn't have the Holy Ghost is this so difficult they didn't have the Holy Ghost they received the Holy Ghost and the Apostles didn't say now that we've come down we're here to pray for you that you would release the gift of the Holy Ghost that's already in you mm. why does this matter so much because you're being set up wrongly mm -hmm. the false will not take you to where the truth is supposed to mm. and why would I receive something I already have right mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna pray for you to receive the Holy Ghost no nah, it's okay I already have the Holy Ghost I got born again can you see how many people won't like this message yeah. because that's what they've been preaching the whole time mm -hmm. it gets worse wait wait till, wait till we go to the next thing <laughs> see it's much more palatable to people to say now re now release the gift that's in you mm -hmm. than to say you have to receive something that you don't have mm -hmm. that's offensive what do you mean I don't have <laughs> right Acts chapter 19 I know I've preached on this extensively here Paul is actually running into disciples they're disciples of someone who went off and preached without receiving the Holy Ghost and in uh, let's see here Acts chapter 19 and verse 1 and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth Paul having passed through the upper coasts came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples verse 2 and he said unto them have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed there's no reason on God's green earth that someone would ask someone if they have received the Holy Ghost since they believed if in fact someone receives the Holy Ghost when they believe right. Right. Mm -hmm. and here we have the Apostle Paul coming up to someone the very first words have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed and again he didn't say have you released the Holy Ghost that you received when you believed these are simple enough words for anyone to understand but this one in my opinion is so concrete you can't get around it there's no reason for Paul to even ask that of anyone if the doctrine is true that you have the Holy Ghost when you get born again you don't he did an operation in you cleaned you up and made you a brand new creature a baby spirit but then you have, you must receive him in order to be filled with the Holy Ghost Does this makes sense yes. mm -hmm. have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed knowing this I get ir irritated over it when I hear preachers preaching for years and years when they believe they've received the Holy Ghost and now they just need to release the gift of speaking in other tongues I find it offensive and I hear it all the time from people who should know better and here it is the second lie which is closely connected to the first one you already have in you everything that you need to succeed you already have in you everything you need to succeed that feels really good doesn't it it's very encouraging I already have in me everything I need to succeed it's not true you were made a spirit baby you were made tabla rasa a clean slate you have unlimited potential but you don't have in you everything you need to succeed in fact you have nothing but potential mm -hmm. a lot of that everything is in the Holy Ghost say everything, everything. is in the Holy Ghost living God gives me richly all things to enjoy Do you remember that verse of scripture mm -hmm. well if I already have everything in me that I need to succeed then I frankly don't need the Holy Ghost do I mm -hmm. boo everything you need is in the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by speaking in agreement with his words everything's in there Amen. and this is new but if you get this straight you've got something do you see how you would be held back from receiving the new manifestation of the spirit if you've already bought into those other lies
and we're talking about the new manifestation of the spirit and you will never get here if you hold on to the old lies the new manifestation of the spirit makes the old look stupid there might even have been a few times when I was talking this evening where you said well that's stupid the new manifestation of the spirit makes the old look stupid and ill-informed but that's the life of the non Holy Ghost worshiper especially to us mm -hmm. they've been set up wrong you know there's things that you have to set up right for it to work correctly mm -hmm. and for it to go the way you want it to go you ever get something in the mail or you have to put it together and you got to follow the instructions and put it together the right way well, so much of the church has been put together wrong and preachers just keep trying to go with it and they just end back at the beginning so first you don't have the Holy Ghost when you get born again you're just born again mm -hmm. you're born again by an operation of the Spirit the second lie is that you already have everything in you that you need it's not true you need if that was true why would Jesus send the Holy Ghost again it's a it's a lie that's trying to replace who the Holy Ghost is in the earth and therefore it keeps people away from him this gives rise to the third lie and that is that the anointing is the Holy Ghost you hear it all the time most people don't differentiate at all between one or the other the anointing is the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is the anointing but the Holy Ghost is not the anointing the anointing is power the anointing are gifts of the Spirit the anointing is something he gives but it's not him and if you don't understand this no wonder you don't worship the Holy Ghost because you think you're worshiping the anointing well you shouldn't worship the anointing see because I can be born again not having received the Spirit and be anointed to do things everybody in the Old Testament almost all the gifts of the Spirit we're in the Old Testament and no one was born again mm -hmm. so the anointing can come on people mm -hmm. but I don't need the Holy Ghost I have the anointing oh but I have an anointing therefore I have the Holy Ghost no you don't Luke chapter 4 verse 18 and Jesus said verse 18 the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he say he he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted so we have Jesus differentiating between the he the Spirit Lord that sent him and the anointing and the call and the gifts that he operated in are you getting this the Holy Ghost is not the power the Holy Ghost is not the anointing he hath anointed me and then we see Jesus doing healings and deliverances by what means the power of the Holy Ghost the anointing of the Holy Ghost and we see this in our day we see people with one degree or another operating in power and anointings right mm -hmm. some in a great degree and then we sit there and we go wow that guy really knows the Holy Ghost and then we listen to him and he gets up and starts teaching on things that he obviously doesn't know anything about mm -hmm. he certainly knows about the anointing he knows how to work the anointing but then he'll get up and say you have the Holy Ghost when you get born again and then he'll say you just need to release the gift that you already have that you've already received and they'll say things like you have 
by getting born again you now have everything you need to succeed all of these things that I've disproven with this mm -hmm. and we think and listen to all of his teachings on the Holy Ghost because we think he obviously knows who the Holy Ghost is but he doesn't he just knows the power of the Spirit he has anointings of the Spirit and he's developed the ability to work in those things mm -hmm. he knows how to work it and yet you'll never hear the words I worship you Holy Ghost come out of his mouth because the Holy Ghost that he's operating in is a power it's an anointing and you don't worship the anointing Matthew chapter 7 verse 22 many will say to me say many, many. is that like one no. one one guy got you know tripped up and he said this no this says many will say unto me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in thy name mm -hmm. prophecy is a gift of the Spirit mm -hmm. and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name have done many wonderful works all which you can do with anointings and the gifts of the Spirit verse 23 and then will I profess unto them I never knew you I never knew you mm -hmm. depart from me you that work iniquity now I'm not judging people that are using anointings and gifts of the Spirit I do it too but the Holy Ghost is not an anointing and I will say too that these people that I hear preach like that and have great anointings and God bless them but they do not worship the Holy Ghost they're not Holy Ghost worshipers and I have found that in this room of Holy Ghost worship what do you mean by that meaning you enter a, a place when you worship the Holy Ghost as God I have found that he is definitely not an anointing mm -hmm. is the Holy Ghost an anointing No. he is God and you should worship him and everything has changed in this room and if you continue to keep preaching the old lies from that old place I can hear it you are not in this room you may think you are you may even say you are but you're not what you have is a mixture oh I found this new piece of cloth this new piece of theology and I'll just put it on this hole that I have left in my theology that's what Holy Ghost worship would have to be <laughs> covering up a hole that you left in your theology mm -hmm. doesn't do it what's it do it rips it up and it destroys it it makes the old look ridiculous mm -hmm. Holy Ghost worship covers nothing it requires complete change to Holy Ghost only and so we see those people not going here in an endless pursuit of a greater anointing and a greater anointing I know I was that guy and you hear about this greater anointing this guy over there is great anointing this guy over there he's got a great anointing mm -hmm. and yet they don't worship me says the Spirit Lord they don't worship him they can't go where we are going in fact if they continue you won't even recognize it when the new manifestation appears because it's not an anointing and that's what they'll say that it's not of God because they think the Holy Ghost is an anointing none of this works until you are willing to go all the way you have to go all the way to Holy Ghost only because he is the only God in the earth today and we walk with him and your little silly doctrines of lies that I've exposed tonight will keep you from going here 
and will keep you in a mixture and none of this works unless you go all the way doesn't that sound right yeah. none of this works unless you go all the way and then everything works this is new and there is a new manifestation of the spirit coming and it makes the old look stupid ill-informed ridiculous and even fake join me in this creative destruction holy ghost i thank you for blessing these people that they have heard the word this evening and they've been affected by it and things have shifted to the way they can now see their way clear and they can begin worshiping you holy ghost as god in the earth today i thank you to make this change permanent and make it complete that they will never go back to the old ways that held them back we worship you holy ghost in jesus name amen, amen. if you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand say this after me holy ghost, holy ghost. i worship you you are the living god you richly provide me with all things for my enjoyment and I worship you in it in Jesus name amen